The South Korean U.S. combined military exercises begin today. I think the right thing to do is to minimize the scale of the exercises or to stop the exercises permanently, because the exercises can provoke North Korea during the crisis in the Korean Peninsula. Says they're defensive, but Pyongyang says they're a practice for invasion. This is a public service announcement telling them what to expect over 10 days of military drills. Training which the government says is necessary in case of attack by its neighbor, but which North Korea views as preparation for an invasion. military drill is really one of the largest in the region. It has thousands of South Korean U.S. allied troops. It's a computerized war game and they test out different scenarios regarding conventional and nuclear threats and how each side would respond. Now it lasts for 10 days and it's been going on since the 70s. Now, each year, North Korea, their propaganda machine, really, it uses this event to play the victim and to try to drive a wedge through the effort in hopes of driving U.S. forces from the Korean Peninsula. It takes a lot to put people in Seoul on edge, but what's different now is secretive North Korea's growing nuclear capability and Donald Trump's lack of patience in the White House. We don't know what's going to happen, so we need to be prepared for how Kim Jong-un will act. That's why we need the training. North Korea is aiming its nuclear weapons at the world, but this is a miscalculation. The U.S. won't just stand by and let them do what they want. The people of South Korea are being braced for every eventuality. Of course, they've heard all the threats before, but this time things are much more serious. North Korea should not distort our efforts, and it should not make provocative actions aggravating the situation by using it as an excuse. So this is dividing much of South Korea and prompting a robust debate in Washington. Does the U.S. really modify the games or show restraint in hopes of bringing North Korea to the negotiating table? Or do we show strength? Does the U.S. demonstrate it will not give in to threats or abandon allies? Well, that debate is heating up here, or in South Korea, rather, as activists demand that they stop the exercises to appease Kim Jong-un to avoid war. There is no intent at all to heighten military tensions on the Korean Peninsula, as these drills are held annually and in a defensive nature. North Korea should not exaggerate our efforts to keep peace, nor should they engage in provocations that would worsen the situation 
using the exercises as an excuse. The two careers are divided by a slither of land known as the demilitarized zone. We filmed there hours before the drills started. In the pouring rain, propaganda music blares out. These two countries are still technically at war. The only people who go to the DMZ are the military and tourists. Some leave peace ribbons, but unification seems further away than ever, with North Korea condemning the drills as reckless behavior, which is driving this crisis to a nuclear war. A year ago, North Korea responded to the annual drills with a ballistic missile test from a submarine. Now the world again waits for the reaction of the North Korean leader, a man who loathes being pushed around by his arch enemy, America. with Carrier Airborne Early Warning Squadron 125 returned to Marine Corps Air Station Iwakuni from their deployment aboard the USS Ronald Reagan. This was VAW 125's first deployment in support of Carrier Air Wing 5. The deployment provided protection and defense for the Indo-Asia Pacific region. Uh, while deployed, we integrated and trained with various uh, coalition partners as well as the rest of the Carrier Strike Group. The show presence operations that we did, uh, as well as the training conducted, uh, is crucial to maintaining a ready air wing. Uh, as well as a, as a strike group uh, in order to maintain stability in the region. The squadron deployed with E-2D Advanced Hawkeye Aircraft. The E-2 is the latest version of the E-2 Hawkeye series of aircraft in the U.S. Navy and comes with the most advanced airborne radar in the world. The mission of the E-2D is to be in a communications platform as well as using our radar uh, to kind of be the eyes and ears of the fleet. Five E-2D aircraft with BAW-125 landed at MCAS Iwakuni in February and quickly set off on the deployment. Uh, during the deployment, there was a lot of, you know, a lot of emotions. Uh, you know, leaving my wife and kids here uh, for a little time, uh, being that it was my daughter's first deployment, was very exciting and emotional for her. And then being able to see the boat when they came up to Yakuska, just watching, seeing their faces was, was, was great. There's a lot of emotions going on. Deployments like these provide a combat-ready force that protects and defends the collaborative maritime interests of its allies and partners in the Indo-Asia Pacific region. Reporting from Marine Corps Air Station Iwakuni, Japan, I'm Marine Corporal Sarah Abrego.